Welcome to the latest podcast in a series from the internationalist in the ANA. I'm Brendan Banaham, Managing Director of the Internationalist Group of Companies. We focus on the reinvention of marketing by connecting the people and ideas in international marketing through content, insights, thought leadership, community collaboration, and consulting. Today's podcast shares how people in our global community are not merely handling today's pandemic crisis, but helping us all to better navigate it. The ability to inspire people to be their best is valuable in difficult time, and no one does this better than marketers. I'll now turn the podcast over to Deborah Malone, founder of The Internationalist. Thanks, Brendan, and welcome to another Internationalist Trendsetter show. Sebastian Jesperson is an innovator, a business strategist, and a breakthrough digital thinker. He has a provocative idea that involves our new digital world and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In fact, it is an idea that puts marketers at the center and emphasizes how they can make a difference for a more meaningful and safe digital life. Welcome to the show, Sebastian. Thank you so much, Deborah. I really appreciate you having me on today. Now, it's a pleasure, and, and you always have such fascinating things to, to talk about and, and to move our industry forward. So I'm, I'm delighted that, that you're with us today. But look, why don't we start in a, in a very basic manner? Um, why don't you briefly outline the significance of the UN Sustainable Development Goals and their connection to business today? Sure. As, uh, as with most other things, obviously, it will be a, um, my, my own opinion. But what I do believe in, in terms of the UN, it's such an important institution, especially right now in the, uh, the times that, that, that we live in, where there's a lot of national interest and maybe uh, national interests that are lo- looking one, two, three years ahead. Then we have established this global institution where we can come together as, a, as, a, as one planet and agree to something that we all have in common, and that is obviously to make sure that the planet uh, is here and we can live on it uh, for not just the next generations, but the generations to come. So, um, so I, I do think that, that uh, the UN is a, an, important, an extremely important institution and that we have now defined 17 goals that despite uh, of that you are <clears throat> raised and living uh, and operating a business in, in Europe, in Asia, in the US, then uh, that is uh, something that, that we can all adhere to, that we all believe is, uh, is good. <clears throat> it's, it, uh, it, it's good business. It's, it, well, that's interesting that you say it. it, is, it it's, it's good business and it, it's good for the citizens and it's good for the planet. Um, interestingly, you note that of the 17 goals now in place at the United Nations, not one of them concerns our digital life today. And, um, well, look, before I I jump in on that, why don't you just talk a little bit more about that? Because I know you have a concept um, that says we don't just go online, we live online. And this is very much connected to, to your thoughts on these goals. So, so go ahead. Sure. Um, I, don't, I don't believe in, a, in an offline and an online world. I believe that, that these two worlds, has, they have uh, come together. It's symbiotic, the way that, that, that we use them. And uh, if you look at, at how much a, an average individual today is connected to that online world, it is more than uh, than six hours a day, and if you look at a, a U.S. citizen, it's more than eight nine hours a day. So, talking about going online, I think simply think that that's a misunderstanding. We are we are living online, meaning that that we're doing more of our banking, we do more of our communication, we do more of our shopping, we do more of our dating. If you're doing that uh, online, so so uh, <clears throat> what what's important here is that that. That when, when we are talking about uh, living our best possible lives, which I do believe that the, uh, the 17 goals of the UN they are addressing, I don't think that, that, that we can talk about living a great life without also talking about what is that great life in a, uh, from a digital perspective. Yeah, particularly with the amount of time that everyone's spending, as, as you mentioned, in, in a work-from-home world. Um, well, let's dig a little deeper 
into it because it, it's clear that you know our technology driven world is becoming more essential to even human connections, um, as you point out, as well as commerce and and so on. But what are some of the challenges that you see in our in our digital life, um, particularly in terms of data that that this this new proposed your proposed UN goal number eighteen might address. First of all, then we have made tremendous progress. We have moved us a lot in a very short period of time, and everything that 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 moves a lot in a very short period of time. And right now, because of COVID. We have certainly obviously changed behavior in a very short period of time. So I don't believe that that obviously that the COVID has has uh, enforced new habits. They have accelerated existing habits, and those are, are coming back to what what I what I just uh, mentioned in terms of how we work, how we connect, uh, uh, etc. Yet, uh, politicians um, across uh, the globe in the EU in terms of GDPR, in California with the Privacy Act, uh, uh, Canada, etc., has put forward a, a number of um, legislation that are to protect citizens. But I do think that, that doing so on a regional slash country slash state, maybe even county level, is the wrong mindset. We need to aggregate it up. It, exactly as we have done with the 17 goals and discuss on a global level, what is it? How is it that we, on one hand, can protect our citizens so they can live the best possible life? And on the other hand, make sure that corporations and their customers and their different stakeholders together can find solutions because these solutions are not going to come out of governments most likely they're going to come out of corporations. So I think actually both corporations and citizens, they would like to discuss that and find solutions. Yet when politicians are trying to uh, put these solutions forward, they're doing it obviously with information that is aggregated from the past. And in an area that is moving so fast as we are seeing right now, the likelihood of their coming up with something that is meaningful and can protect citizens moving forward in my world is quite limited. Well, you are certainly um, a, a pioneer in in terms of all things digital. Um, I, I'd love to know if if you think that it's possible to balance the benefits are of our fast evolving technology, as as you mentioned, it's evolving so fast that not even governments can keep up. But is it possible to benefit to balance the benefits of fast evolving technology? with concerns like data privacy or even concerns like overexposure to digital advertising? Um, what's your view? Of course it is. And uh, what, what it requires here is that, that we, we, we understand that the world that we're operating in, and that is a very, very new world. So I even think that, that we need a new vocabulary in order to describe it. As I said, I don't go online, I live online. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not engaged with a company like Google or Microsoft. I'm entangled. And when you start to understand that, that new way of living, that we are, are sharing uh, so much of ourselves with these different companies, it's at that point uh, that I think that, that that is the point of departure and where you need to understand the, that I don't think that, that humanity will be better off limiting that world in terms of di- uh, data protection. What I do believe here is that that companies and its, uh, its customers, citizens in, in general, together can find solutions that would enable people around the world to live their best possible lives. And we do need to remember that me coming from, uh, from Denmark, this is a highly regulated and uh, transparent uh, uh, country. And now living in the U.S., which certainly as well has a high degree of, um, of protection. But if I was living uh, and, and have grown up in other parts of this world, I might actually trust 
these companies more than I trust my government. So the, 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 the core idea of that, that an institution have a lot of data about me is, is certainly not new. We have just been used to that it has been the government. And I don't think that the government per se is better in protecting these data than these companies. Nor do I actually think that in terms of morally that they are protecting me, that they actually are better. And there has been a number of examples of that where the U.S. government was trying to force Apple to give data about certain things. And they said, no, we are not going to give up data about our customers just because that, 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 uh, that you want it. So, so when you're looking at it from, from, from that angle, what we need here is, a, is, a, is an 18 goal where we come together and defining what kind of life do we want to live. Because, of course, do we need to define some game rules? We need to define some overarching um, legislation that that company can adhere to. But it has to be done, for me, at, a, at the UN level and not at the country level. Well, let, let's just continue with that for a second. What, would, uh, what is the language for a proposed 18th uh, Sustainable Development Goal? Well, I, I think in terms of meaningfulness, Right. We all uh, have to live a, a meaningful life because if you don't, it will be a sad life. So, so um, an 18 goal to me would, would certainly be that, that, it, it, that we need to enable a meaningful and protected digital life. Interesting. Um, I, I, um, I, I think that you talked a little bit about words um, before and, and rewriting um, a, um, a, a vocabulary for these times um, by saying we, we don't work online, we live online, we don't go online, we live online. Um, and you, you also use the word entangle. Um, and I realize that the goals are for citizens, but, but they are largely a, adopted by businesses um, as well, who can indeed make a difference in that they are global, many are global by nature. Um, so talk a little bit now about, about how brands must entangle with their customers and, and what this can mean for a, a quality of life as well. Entanglement that is borrowed from uh, from quantum physics again. I coming from Denmark and one of the pioneers within uh, quantum physics. Obviously, I, I share that um, national uh, citizenship with uh, with Niels Bohr. But but entangled is when two particles they become one. Mm -hmm. And if you think about companies and its customers becoming one, then doing things together in a mutual beneficial relationship. That is how I feel my relationship with a company like Google or with a company like Nike that is telling me to exercise and when I'm doing too much and when I'm doing too little, I can compare myself, et cetera. And actually, I'm starting to feel entangled. They're doing things with me and not to me. And when you had such a relationship, I think for, uh, for, for companies, that is the big opportunity. Because you are entering into a, a relationship where you together with the customers are developing something. And that is when, when uh, it's becoming meaningful for the customer. And a lot of companies have over the past years been talking about purpose. And a lot of these purposes obviously relate to that. So, so <clears throat> I, I, I think that that, uh, that entangled relationship is something that, that you can have with some companies, of course, not all companies, and some companies can have it with some customers, not all of their customers. But it's important that, that we understand that our relationship with companies and brands has developed tremendously over the, just the, the past 10 years. And that is the core reason why the UN and we as global citizens has to define what is it. So, so would you say that it, it's it, that entangled, entangled relationship has come largely due to our living a, a greater digital life? I would say that it has come with scale, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and and these companies 
they know more about me, maybe that myself, I know more about, they know more about me that I know about myself. And, and just think about it. Think about how much do you have put into the Google search string, how much that you have been using your, your Gmail, how much you have been using Google Maps, uh, YouTube, etc. If you aggregate all of that up, it gives a pretty good picture about who you are and, and, and also how Google can develop services that is meaningful to its customers, but with the wrong individuals and no global guidance from an institution like the UN, they could also do something that becomes extremely intrusive. Now, um, I, I, I was just wondering, um, you know, if, if then this new, your newly proposed um, sustainable development goal for living a safe and meaningful digital life, does this then put marketers at the center of, of really being the champions for this? Yes, because I don't think that there's anyone in these corporations and brands that know more about the customer, or at least becomes natural to understand the customer than marketeers. Mm -hmm. So I think that the role of the marketeer has changed over the, year, the years, changed from let's now the best possible way market a specific service or product to actually to understand what is meaningful for our customers. And those companies that are entangling, I think that that is what the marketeers, they're championing inside these companies. It's not about marketing the next service the best possible, cheapest, most aggressive way. I do actually think that they are asking themselves, how can we do something with our customers? What is meaningful to that customer? And you can only talk about meaning if you understand. And again, coming back to who is it that, that should champion this within corporations? That is, to me, marketeers, because those individuals has um, always become natural for them to look at this from an outside-in perspective and not from an inside-out. No, that, that, that's very interesting. And I, I certainly know that, um, you know, at least in my mind, you know, the marketing department can be both the, um, the head and the heart of the organization. Now, now it seems that, that with data, um, they're, they're also a, a new champion in many ways. So um, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by, by how that matters. Um, so let me, let me just end this with, with just a, a, a couple of very general, uh, you know, related questions. Um, what are the next steps? Um, and, you know, uh, there might be some people who might argue that um, the UN may not have, um, although they have an aspirational role, um, maybe they they don't have necessarily the power um, to um, I don't want to say enforce, but but the power to um, suggest this. Um, although I do know that there have been what is it ninety five hundred companies or an extraordinary amount that have committed to to these goals. Um, so just yeah, just let us know what's next. Well, what what's next is that that I'm trying to advocate this for. For some of the larger to, to, to some of the, uh, the larger technology companies, it's obviously not me or British um, British agency that that I run but that that should um, that, that should own this. But uh, I've been uh, been talking to, to various companies, uh, especially some of the larger technology companies, about this, and they really uh, are intrigued by the idea. It's something that obviously that uh, they understand the importance of. Uh, I think better maybe than uh, than anyone. And uh, some of these companies has even, up, as, as we know, been, been talking about uh, creating applications that are creating at least some transparency and, and suggesting when we should have downtime, when we should go offline. Uh, they have been championing in terms of creating a, a safe digital life for us. And then now I think that, that uh, most of them also understand that in a world where, despite that, that we have uh, the, the best possible in terms of prosperity uh, times in the world, history, teen suicide rate, uh, depression, stress is at an, at an all-time high. 
So the, the ability to talk about meaning, I think, is a very on a very high agenda point at, at, at many of these companies. So uh, all in all, I think that, that uh, what we need here is the, some of the larger te- te- technology companies to take ownership of this and go back to the UN. That has There have been discussions about this at the UN, but not in the air on, at the SDG level. And, and I think that, that I don't think that there's any place on this planet where we are not talking about one, meaning, fullness, two, being safe. And again, coming back to that, that we are spending a majority of our waking hours connected, then I do believe that this is important, extremely important right now. And moving forward, it would be even more important. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, it feels to me uh, like whiplash. Um, this whole last, what is it, almost nine months of COVID, it does feel like in part due to technology and, and, and how we work from home, it feels like we've advanced, you know, a decade. Um, you know, as long as we don't, don't get a decade older, I'm okay with it. But, <laughs> but um, it, it does seem that uh, I'm not sure that everybody's even, even processing it yet because it's just been such a natural part of their life. Um, well, this, this is fascinating. I, I think this is breakthrough thinking. And I, I do hope you'll come back and join us and, and let us know um, how the process is going and um, the kind of traction that you're getting with both the UN and with marketers, because this is, this is a significant, um, a, a significant concept. So thank you. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for being part of this. No, thank you so much for having me again. Uh, we appreciate what you do, Deborah. Uh, it, it's important. And uh, let's hope, fingers crossed, that this is getting some traction, or at least it can uh, it can inspire uh, so, some great conversations about what is meaningfulness and, and how is it that we can be safe on many different levels, including the, the, uh, the digital one. Thanks, Sebastian, for being part of today's show and for playing an essential role in our digital world, our digital marketing world, with so many of the breakthrough ideas that you have. Thanks, Sebastian. That concludes today's podcast. Thanks again for listening. For more information on The Internationalist, please go to our website, www.theinternationalist.com. Uh, by the way, there's a uh, there's a hyphen between the and internationalist. That's where you'll find more information on podcasts and interviews, as well as highlights of our various initiatives, including marketing makes a world of difference, internationalist insights and studies, and intelligence briefs, awards and case studies and best practices, peer-to-peer marketing think tanks and forums, and the internationalist press. The ability to inspire people to be their best selves is valuable in difficult times. We feel very strongly about the fact that no one does this better than one.